carcinoid syndrome is the topic and carcinoid syndrome essentially is involving a carcinoid tumor and that tumor is usually in the intestine and most commonly in the ileum but it can occur in other places as well such as the appendix and a few other locations now what happens is this tumor secretes these vasoactive substances and those vasoactive substances are what cause the symptomatology and those substances are serotonin and a few others as well such as histamine and bradykinin and I'll talk a little bit about that but there's a very key point here that this syndrome only happens when the primary tumor metastasizes to the liver so that's a very important part of carcinoid syndrome so essentially what you're talking about is for example a tumor that originally originated in the ileum carcinoid tumor and then it went to the liver when it goes to the liver that's when this syndrome occurs so what are some of the pathophysiology um, and symptomatology involved well there's of course some key players serotonin of course is the biggest player and when it's secreted by the tumor in large quantities it causes certain symptoms such as diarrhea and uh, colic malabsorption things like that now another very uh, important uh, symptom occurs because of the release of certain other substances from the tumor such as histamine and bradykinin and those uh, symptoms include facial flushing this is also a very key symptom what we're talking about is flushing of the head and neck really other symptoms that also can present uh, include skin color changes uh, abdominal cramps for example are also part of uh, the symptoms some patients can also experience wheezing and uh, difficulty breathing dyspnea and then you can also sometimes hear a heart murmur on physical exam in particular on the right side of the heart so keep these in mind diarrhea flushing uh, wheezing things like that so how do you diagnose this well there's a very important uh, test and it involves basically a metabolite of serotonin and as serotonin breaks down there's a very key and important metabolite that is excreted in the urine and that metabolite is 5-H-I-A-A -A. and this is uh, I've seen this on practically every licensing exam I've ever written and for those of you who want to know the entire name it's 5-hydroxy indole acetic acid for the most part it'll be written as 5-H-I-A-A essentially it's a serotonin metabolite that you will find in high quantities in the urine how this is detected is that you have to do a 24-hour urine collection and then that 24-hour urine sample is tested for this normal value uh, for this metabolite in the urine is about 10 milligrams a day in carcinoid it will obviously be much higher it'll be greater than 50 milligrams per day also involved in the diagnosis of course since it's a tumor is some sort of Im imaging to localize the tumor where exactly is the tumor is it in the ileum is it in the appendix is it in the liver and that of course can be done with either a CT or an MRI and then finally some of the tests that are also done involved um, the liver because remember the syndrome only occurs when the tumor primary tumor metastasizes to the liver so that can be done with a hepatic panel for example you might see an elevated alkaline phosphatase value now what is the treatment 
Of course, like most tumors, surgical resection of the actual tumor. But in addition, there's a drug that is given. It's called octreotide. And that octreotide is used to decrease symptoms. And the reason is because octreotide actually inhibits the release of most hormones. And when you inhibit the release of these hormones, you don't get the diarrhea and the flushing that um, occurs in carcinoid syndrome. So let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes. 57-year-old man presents to the primary care physician without particular complaints. Upon review of systems during this annual visit, the PCP reveals complaints of diarrhea. Uh, for the last 12 weeks, um, his wife has noted occasional flushing of the face. A hepatic panel reveals elevated alkaline phosphatase, AST, and bilirubin. The most likely cause of his symptoms is. Let's see. Well, they basically describe some symptomatology. There's evidence here of some liver um, involvement. So for the most part, this is a carcinoid. Uh, doesn't give you that much information in the clinical vignette, which is a bit unfortunate. But for the most part, part it's carcinoid. And carcinoid involves um, several vasoactive substances, the most important of which is serotonin. Which of the following is the most appropriate diagnostic test? Well, I remember I always choose the cheapest and easiest one instead of jumping straight to the CT, although that might be attempting. Remember, you are trying to look for 5-HIAA, which is a metabolite of serotonin, and that is found by taking a 24-hour sample of the urine and then testing the urine. So that would be choice B. Next question. A 50-year-old man presents to the doctor with diarrhea, flushing, and wheezing. Physical exam is significant for a grade 2 to um, uh, 6 diastolic murmur located at the right sternal border of the fourth intercostal space. Which of the following substances is most likely to be elevated in this patient's urine? Well, again, a very kind of basic clinical vignette that doesn't give you too much information, but the actual last sentence gives me more information than the rest of, of the question. It's actually telling you, you know, it's really even telling you that you have to test the patient's urine, and that kind of makes me think of a metabolite. A metabolite of a hormone or a substance that's causing these symptoms. That substance most commonly is serotonin, and its metabolite is 5-HIAA. And finally, a 56-year-old man complains of recent onset of dyspnea and wheezing. Other symptoms include diarrhea and facial flushing. You order a CT of the abdomen and receive a report um, of lesions in the right liver lobe and appendix. Which of the following medications will you use to resolve patient symptoms before surgery? Again, a very nice... Uh, question about carcinoid and uh, sounds like it started in the intestine and then it went to the liver so that's why this patient has developed symptoms and to uh, decrease the symptoms you want to give a medication that inhibits the release of most of the hormones and that is octreotide so the answer to this question is B